Could this be the best beginner friendly charge controller? Right in the box comes with your little blue smart controller. Very nice, got a decent heat heat seek on it, which is good. And we've got a a user manual here, so we we'll may have a quick little look through this later on down the track. Victron Energy are a very renowned brand. They do a lot of solar power products, um, inverters, charge controllers. Um, yeah, so these have been around for a long time. They've got a very good reputation. These units here come with a five-year warranty. So this particular model, model is a smart charge controller. So this is a Bluetooth model. We can connect it up to the Victron app and we can um, do a lot of things in that app. We can see the status of the battery, um, the wattage that's gone into the battery, for example. We can change some of the charge perimeters this charge controller, for example, has presets for lithium ion phosphate batteries, AGM batteries, gel battery, and lead acid batteries. Another reason why this is a good beginner friendly charge controller. So we can simply go into the app, we can change the charge parameters, that's all preset. So it's very simple to use as opposed to this BN series from EP Ever. Uh, these are great, great solid charge controllers. I highly recommend them, but they aren't as user friendly. Um, to change the charge perimeters for lithium ion, bat um, lithium ion phosphate batteries, you need to actually go in and change the parameters um, bit by bit, which um, is not ideal for beginners this is an MPPT, which stands for a maximum power point tracking, far more efficient. You, um, it claims up to 98% efficiency conversion from your solar panels to your batteries. That's why the MPP charge controllers are a lot more expensive than the PWM controllers. Um, um, that's another video in itself explaining the difference between those two. What you have at the front here is your battery terminal posts, your PV, which is your solar panel input, and your load. So your load can run basically through solar. If there's any excess power, you can run a load. You can use this to run lights or fans, whatnot, up to the 20 amps. Obviously, a larger controller will put out a larger load. We've got the LED status lights here so that will show you what status the the charge controller is in um, so you can get a quick glance of what your battery is doing and what state of charge it's in blue led is for bulk so if you see a blue led you know that the charger is in bulk mode so it's put as much power as it possibly can into your batteries yellow is absorption mode so the bulk of the charging is done and now we're trying to get the absorption in, um, just just basically topping off the, the batteries. And then green LED light is float mode. So your bulk's been done, your absorption's been done, and now it's just keeping that the, um, the battery topped up. So there's your quick indicators. Obviously you've got a 25 amp, hour, uh, 25 amp fuse here, which is good. That's your, um, a port so you can put in a dongle, um, but we won't worry about that for the moment. That may be another video, but nice decent heat sink. And then on the side here is where you can earth out your charge controller. The higher PV voltage input is great if you want to purchase second hand house panels. A lot of house panels are run at a higher voltage than 12 volt panels. So 
this is a great charge controller if you wanted to buy secondhand house pedals you can pick them up cheap in my opinion they're better quality than some of the cheap eBay and Amazon products you can uh, solar panels you can buy house panels are made to a certain standard they have to apply to laws and that so there are a higher standard panel and normally you can pick up 250 watt panels for example for around $50 if you're lucky also another reason if you had house panels higher voltage so if you do end up wanting to move up to a 24 volt or 48 volt system then your panels are already at that high voltage to allow for the the upgrade one of the main reasons and it's an important reason why this is a perfect beginner friendly charge controller is the 12 24 and 48 volt options this is all automatic so if you hook a 24 volt system up it will automatically detect that simple easy don't have to worry about it it will automatically detect the voltage um, so if you ever wanted to upgrade your system you don't need to throw out this charge controller there are advantages to use a high volt system such as charge efficiency you can use the similar size controller and get far more solar panel input into your batteries as well yeah a lot more efficient but for my most beginners 12 volt is what they'll go for 12 volt is a very safe voltage there are a huge variety of products in the 12 volt range huge variety of inverters that you can buy 12 volt online um, a lot of different brands price ranges um, so 12 volt is a great option for any beginners um, you can also find a lot of products 12 volt inverters on marketplace and gumtree and stuff like that as well so you can pick up an inverter cheap or any other accessory cheap 12 volt I'm just hooking this up temporary guys so keep that in mind um, make sure red obviously to your positive your plus your black to your negative it is very important that you screw down your cables reasonably firm and tight um, half a lot of the reasons why people have trouble with their system is loose cables so you always don't over tighten them but make sure that they're nice and tight and as you can see you pull on that they're not going anywhere any loose connections on cables is the main source of heat so that's why you want to have very very nice solid connections you should always connect your battery up first guys never connect your solar panels to a charger first you should always connect your battery up first and once that battery is connected then you can connect your solar panels now that the battery is connected up now it's got it fused here you can see and we've got a blue flashing light so you don't have to do it now but I'm gonna connect this up to the Bluetooth app and we can change the settings make sure it's on lithium ion phosphate once you bring up the app you can see here the smart solar 120 48 volt and connect on that you can see the flashing lights over there that's indicating that it's connecting and to pair this the code will be the starting code will be six zeros so one two three four five six pair you can change the code later on down the track once you're logged in um, this is pretty normal they want you to upgrade the version when you first connect up so we'll update that so we'll leave this for a minute or two 
we'll let this update all right once that's done press continue we can go back into it now and there you go we've got this app up and ready connected um, unsecured access we can change the pin now but we won't do that now so as you can see here we can see the battery voltage this is um, come up with a request saying instant readout so basically what this is is when you open the app up you can get a small overview of what the charge controllers are doing um, I have done that to my previous controller as well so I will enable this and as I'll go out you could sort of see there the overview 12.19 volts connecting the solar now just keep in mind that the plus is on this side on the opposite side so don't get confused make sure you put the red on the plus the black on the minus making sure it's nice and firm and snug beautiful so if we go to this um, gear button up the top here we can go to battery factory preset is factory default but if you go to select preset you've got your options here so we'll want to go to smart lithium okay so that's set the parameters already we you can tweak that a little bit if you want but I'll just leave it as it is for now that should work fine low temperature cutoff so if you're in a colder envir environment and you don't have a low temperature cutoff on your batteries you can set a low temperature cutoff on this charge controller which is great all right it's now time to connect the solar up making sure that we're within the voltage range on this charge controller and within the wattage range which this is this is around 32 to 34 volts we'll plug this in as you can see 206 watts going into the battery now solar voltage it's trying to find the maximum power point here you can see the voltage is changing so give it a second and we'll find the the maximum voltage 13.4 volts and 15 amps at the moment going into the battery and the state of charge is bulk which is good as you can see the blue LED light it's bulk so this is working perfectly as it should and we are now charging this 50 amp hour lithium battery you have it guys 211 watts going into this battery and we if we add an inverter to this setup then we have a, a small functional 12 volt solar system ready to use which I think is awesome and this is why I think the Victron smart controller is the perfect beginner friendly charge controller